Well, hello there. Figured I'd take you guys along today. I'm cleaning some records that arrived in the mail. 45 RPM records. Right there, see? This, boys and girls, is the stuff of music. This is where rock and roll came from. This is how people heard the songs before there was an internet where everything was a free download or you could stream anything. The record companies would put these out and they would go out to jukeboxes and radio stations and record stores. And I collect them because they make me happy. You might say, in a world where you can stream anything, why on earth, Joe, would you waste your time with this? Make sure I had that promise. Sweet Mary. Good song. Uh, why would you waste your time with that? Well, because this is the original sound. This is the way they sounded the songs that I grew up with when they originally appeared on the radio or in the jukebox at the pizza place. And so, therefore, I like to listen to them. It makes me happy. There's a big debate over what is better, analog or digital. It goes back and forth. All I can say about it is it's different. And a lot of you who have grew up listening to certain songs on the radio have never heard the original versions because they were never issued on CD. See, back in the 60s, pretty much every new song was issued in mono because AM radio was mono, uh, FM radio was stereo, but that was a new thing, and that was for old fart people, not for people who listen to rock and roll anyway. And so therefore, the record companies would do an alternate mix for a 45. Some people call it a hot mix. And later on, when all of these oldies stations came along and FM stereo was a thing, they decided that they were going to put out the stereo mixes, and that's what you hear. And sometimes it can be vastly different. So let's talk a little bit about the record cleaning machine. This is a spin clean. They are available on like Amazon for around 80 bucks. They come with the, the box here that you put water in, and they have these brushes. Let's see if I can get it out of here. You see right there that go into slots. There's two of them. And that's what actually cleans the record. The instructions say to use distilled water, but tap water is actually okay. Especially if you have soft water, which is what I have. And they send you this little bottle of flocculant. It's not really a cleaning solution as much as it is a chemical that kind of grabs the dirt and puts it on the bottom of the tank so it doesn't get back all over the records. I also like to add a little bit of isopropyl alcohol in with that. This is 91%, just a couple of squirts. And the reason why is this does a wonderful job dissolving grease or nicotine. If a record has come out of a jukebox, then it may have nicotine on it. It's hard to get off with just regular record cleaners. That's all you do is you sit here and you spin these things this way. The Instructions say to do it about three or four times each direction, depending on how dirty the record is. I'll go back and forth and back and forth. As far as how much of that flocculent to, to use, they said use two caps from the small bottle. I found out pretty quick that that was too much. And so I only use uh, like maybe three quarters of one cap, and that seems to allow it to do its job. You should not play dirty records, boys and girls. It's a bad thing to do. I put up a video a long time ago, I mean more than 10 years ago now, talking about cleaning records in the sink with soap and water, which is a method that I also use. And I've got some pretty weird reactions from that. The audiophile crowd goes crazy. They're going to be like, you, you use tap water on your records? And, and alcohol? It'll destroy them. No, that no, it won't. No, it won't. These are plastic. Some of them are made out of 
vinyl, and some of them are made out of polystyrene. That's right, not all records are made out of vinyl, boys and girls. The main thing when you clean records, whether you do it in the sink or whether you do it in a machine like this that uses water, is to get them dry quickly. Do not let the water set on the record because it has all the contaminants in the water and the water dries and leaves them behind. And if you have hard water that leaves like spots on your dishes and stuff like that, it'll do it on your records. And that's lime and that's really hard to get off. So the trick here is to make sure that you have uh, microfiber towels that actually comes with this machine. I'm using the ones that came with it. Or paper towels will do in a pinch. I don't like to use those anymore, even though that video I posted 10 years ago, I was used a lot of paper towels in it. And that's because at that time I didn't know it, but there is a uh, additive to paper towels that can stick to the record sometimes. I really haven't had a problem with it through the years, but it's just as easy to use a microfiber towel, or you can use just like an old terry cloth towel hand towel, whatever, as long as it's clean. I'll put a link to that old video in the description. Uh, that's a really formal kind of video where I uh, actually had somebody taking pictures and stuff like that. So if you want to see how ugly and fat I am, you can check that out. Because if you do look at it, uh, <laughs> you will probably comment in that direction. That's one of the reasons that I very seldom ever show my face on YouTube. It's just, um, I know that it's just people being stupid, but uh, I get tired of being called ugly and fat. So that's why I do a lot of screencasts. I remain a mystery. What do I actually look like? Eh? Actually, you just follow the link. Get down, kitty. Go on. Well, I guess he can't hurt anything, can he? Can you see him? Let's see. I'm not looking through the camera. Yeah, you can just see him back there. See the kitty? That's Maurice. Can you see Maurice? Anyway, you see a little bit of Maurice, I see. <laughs> he wants to help. He likes to help with everything that I do. He's the latest addition to the cat farm around here. We have four cats. This stuff that I have in my hands is the stuff of music. This is what made rock and roll happen. I said that earlier. And the sales of these little records enabled that rock and roll lifestyle and the posh recording studios you heard about. And uh, it enabled the lavish albums like Sgt. Pepper and Days of Future Past, Moody Blues and Beatles, respectively there, whoever did which. And that was all because of the sales of singles. The advancement in recording technology came from money that came from the sales of these records. And we live in an era now where there's no more physical media. Yeah, you can still buy CDs. You can even buy new records, but it's a tiny percentage of the amount of music that's put out. And I don't even know people who download anymore. They stream things. And so therefore, it makes me wonder where the money's going to come from to keep the music industry going because live performances aren't enough. So it's one of the reasons I hang on to these. Memory of a different time. I worked on the radio for many, many years just to get close to records and music because I'm a music freak. And I watched it change from... Uh, where we used to play records and tapes and then CDs. And uh, I watched it change and turn into where we're feeding a robot. And that's what we do these days. It's just to put a file in a robot and it plays it for us. And the uh, announcer either pushes a button and talks while the machine plays it or records a track that the machine will play later. So, this reminds me of those early days, you know, when records were really cool. I was watching a video the other day 
it was an interview with a producer at Columbia Records named Tio Macero, very famous for recording some very big jazz albums in the late 50s and into the 60s. And also, he was in charge of when Columbia Records launched stereo LPs. That probably would have been 58. And he was talking about putting those records together, and he was talking about the difference between CD and vinyl, and he's adamantly saying that the vinyl sounded much better Although he did say that CD could sound better if you mix to it, which I know is true because one of the best sounding albums that I've ever heard is actually a CD. And it's called Two Against Nature by Steely Dan, and it was recorded specifically for issue on CD. And they mixed it to um, that resolution digital. Boy, it sounds good. But my opinion on it is, is that I have heard really good sounding CDs and terrible sounding records. And it all depends on the process, the mastering process, what gets it from the original tape or digital file or whatever it is to your ears. And if they overprocess CDs as they have want to do in the last few years to make them loud, and they put a lot of limiting and compression and stuff and bump up the bass, then they sound terrible to me. Whereas an original record that was cut about six weeks after the master tape was finished being mixed, it hasn't sat on a shelf, it hasn't decayed, it hasn't been copied 10,000 times, and we're making records from the copy, that's going to sound better, boys and girls, and it does. I was listening to an original pressing of The Stranger the other day, I gave mine away, so I bought another one, and it was absolutely amazing, The Stranger by Billy Joel, one of my favorite, favorite albums. And um, I made the acquaintance of the producer of that record, Phil Ramone, before he passed away, and had a couple of uh, really interesting conversations with him. Phil, unlike T.O. Macero, thought CD and digital was the bee's knees. He said that, uh, yes, a record could sound better, but he wasn't sentimental about it, and he thought you had to move with the times, and that was his attitude. So, yeah, he was a big proponent of the format. I was, too, and still am in a lot of ways. I have thousands of them. See, I, I don't make distinctions. I have a huge digital music file library. I have a bunch of CDs that I keep. I got a, uh, one that's coming in tomorrow. The Best of Three Dog Night from 1990. Can't wait to hear it. CD that I have or I bought. This is a, an original pressing from that year. And um, I, I just, you know, I just take everything as it is. But these guys right here are the ones that I love the best. Little 7-inch 45 Nuggets of Gold. Anyway, that's about all I got to say. I'm going to put links in the description. Uh, I got the interview that I was talking about with Tio Macero. I'll put it down there. I'll also put the link to my original record cleaning video. And you guys can feel free to comment all you want to. Even the audio files going, oh my God, he's cleaning his records in isopropyl alcohol and tap water. He's insane! <clears throat> there are those who are going to say that. It works. And remember, what you're looking at here, these little records are 50, 60, almost some of them are 70 years old. They're damaged goods already. They've come out of jukeboxes or demos that have been passed around. I ain't going to do them no more harm than's already been done to them. <laughs> Thanks for watching, boys and girls. We will meet again soon, and I'm going to continue cleaning these records. How do I turn this thing off? Where's the button? There it is. Bye.